you ever been to Hegwish? Standing here, Baltimore Avenue, at St. Florian's, to talk about this. What we have here is a community cookbook with recipes contributed by parishioners, probably from the mid 50s. But the really cool thing about this cookbook is actually not the recipes. At least a third of the cookbook is devoted to sponsored ads from local businesses of the era. So again, we're talking close to 70 years ago and 90% no longer exist. But I thought it'd be interesting to walk through the neighborhood and go to those addresses and see what we find there and see how much things have changed over the previous three fourths of a century. Let's go for a walk. We're here at 12859 South Karen Dillette. And as you can see, what we have here is an empty lot, previously the home of General Concrete and Block. As recently as 2007, there was a structure here, torn down at some point after that. Here we are at the corner of 130th and Karen Dillette, 12958 South. Former home of Brandy Shell, now Cabrales Auto Repair, number two. Longtime resident at this intersection. Standing here at the corner at 133rd in Baltimore with the giant empty lot behind me. This empty lot is a home to a number of addresses and real estate pins. Previously, the home of Ben A. Anderson Real Estate and Insurance, Kobax Cleaners, and Milan's Snack Shop. All of those businesses were housed in the Hegwish Opera House, which burned down a number of years ago, 2006, I believe. So if you're wondering what the deal with this empty lot is, a lot of history here. Lewis Grocery, formerly at 13226 South Baltimore, currently on the site, First Savings Bank of Hegwish. And speaking of Hegwish banks, First Savings and Loan of Hegwish, currently home to Essential Wax here at 133rd in Baltimore. Previously uh, was a Boost Mobile store until very recently. Here at Leon's, 134th in Baltimore, 13359 South, previously the home of Joe's Service Station. 13505 South Brainerd, right at the end of Baltimore Avenue. And guess what was here 70 years ago? That's right, Club 505 was here 70 years ago. Unfortunately closed for some time, Polka headquarters of Chicago, if not the country. This recipe for the milk spaghetti dinner comes to us from Ann Kursak. We found an obituary for who I believe is her mother that passed away in 1959. Her mother lived at 131st and Brandon. We're excited to sample her specialty milk spaghetti dinner with a name like that. Can't go wrong. All right, let's get our bechamel going. We got our roux here coming along. All right, let's go in with our half and half. It was easier for me to find a small container of half and half. All right, our bechamel has thickened up. Going with the secret ingredient. Don't remember the amount, a few tablespoons. Let's do something like that. Can of diced tomatoes, as well as our sauteed onion, green pepper, and celery. So now we have like a, a thickened creamy tomato sauce. So we'll let that perk away for a little bit. It's interesting to uh, bake noodles. You now, baked pasta shapes is very common, but I suppose in the 50s, even things like rigatoni were pretty exotic. All right, and we go with our sauce. It was really hard to figure out quantities. For pasta, it said use half a package. I mean, a package to me is a pound, but I don't know what they had back then. So I'm gonna stir this up and then it's gonna go into a casserole. You got my buttered casserole in with the pasta. You know, I'm getting really excited about both of these dishes. I thought this would be more of a gag to pick some really dated, silly stuff. Can you really go wrong with this? Take the lid off towards the end there. 13549 South Brandon, previously the home of Dad's Tavern. 
love to take down a few beers in this place, then or now. 13516 South Brandon, we got an empty lot, previously the home to Callahan's Tap. 135th and Brandon here at Old Time Tap. Stalwart in the neighborhood, previously Steve's Tavern. No, not that Steve's Tavern. A much different one many years ago. 13359 South Brandon, corner of 134th and Brandon, currently Las Flores Appliances, previously the illustrious Berghoff Tavern. 13338 South Brandon, currently the Hegwish and Eastside Child Development Center. This massive brick building, once the home to the Hegwish Bowling Alley. Can you even imagine? I throw a few frames. Is it a surprise to anyone that Beacon has been here? Time immemorial, here at 133rd in Brandon. God knows I've had my share of drinks here. One of my favorite spots in the neighborhood. 13260 South Brandon. You ever wonder why Fuente de Vida has this beautiful marble or pseudo marble on the wall? Because this is the one time home of Hegwish Pharmacy, which as far as I know is why this has been painted over right there. Scrape the paint away, you may find the word pharmacy. And right next door, 13. 256, currently Supreme Cuts, previously Hagwish Hardware. 13307 and its neighbor 13309, currently the home to El Taquin. But rewind the clock, 75 years or so, and you would have found Brumley's Cleaners. Previously the home, also Edward Jassic Grocery, and more recently, Baje de Peso. Hegwish Veterans Memorial at 13504 South Baltimore, right on the corner of Brainerd with a large Sherman tank, previously the home to Alpala's Super 66 gas station. Exactly 18 marshmallows, and we're looking for a quarter cup of peach juice. This recipe comes to us from uh, Josephine Rachuk, Hegwish native. Buja passed away at the age of 86 in 2005, and she leaves us with this recipe. Also going to put in a minuscule half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Be something like that. I'm just gonna call it, I think, right there, and go in with the peaches. Could have just bought whipped cream, but uh, it didn't call for whipped cream, it called for cream and said to whip it. So here it goes. Not bad, I think that'll do. So here's our chilled marshmallow and peach combo, and then we've got our whipped cream, so I'm going to take a lump of that and try to just fold it in. I think I'm happy with that. Into the freezer it goes. 13437 South Baltimore, currently the home of Daniel J. Rack Family Dentistry with the great domain name Hegwish Dentist. Previously the home of Mike Rack and Sons Grocery. So this is a family business that has been around a very long time. 13447, home to yet another tavern. That name sure sounds familiar though. Family is still in Hegwish. 75 years later, some things never change. Some funeral homes never die. Pun fully intended. 13328 South Baltimore, China Garden number two, previously the home to Hegwish Photography Studio. Need a family portrait, etc. This is the place to do it. 
Baltimore Foods, 13322, and technically 13324. This store, the combination of, at one time, a tavern and l &S Food Shop. We got another odd number to dress on Brainerd Avenue, 13069. So that would be over somewhere approximately where that wall is. Directly across from me, previously the home to JoJo's Club. 13651 South Buffalo, here at the corner of Brainerd and Buffalo. Calumet Harbor Lumber Company, since 1922 is correct. Previously, Hegwish Lumber and Supply. Been here a long time. Avenue M and 134th, gotta represent Arizona today. Over here at Uncle Bobby's, in the not so distant past, George's Tavern, and the far more distant past, Johnny Krupa's. I bet that was a cool spot to have a drink. 13353 South Avenue M, previously the home to Al Zimba's Meat Market and Grocery. 13330 South Baltimore, currently the home to the Calumet Stewardship Initiative, previously home to the Flower Box. We wish to acknowledge the fine spirit of cooperation by the organization members and the community at large, including the merchants and business firms without which this cookbook could not have been possible. To the women of the community who contributed their recipes, we say many thanks. Signed, The Organization. I can't go back in time, but I can prepare these dishes and think about where they came from and the people behind them. You know, the sauce has mostly absorbed or more or less disappeared. It sort of has a texture of like ricotta. It has a creaminess to it without being actively creamy, meaning it's not like drippy like an Alfredo sauce, but it still maintains that texture somehow. This will be a good bite. This has a little bit of everything on it. Green pepper, tomato. You know, I cooked these as a gag, a way to take a deeper dive into the cookbook. And then I picked things that were a little on the ridiculous side. The title for this one, Milk Spaghetti Dinner. <laughs> when you look at this and you prepare it and you eat it, only an idiot would refuse this meal. This is delicious. Peach Marlowe, time for dessert. That is a textural delight. I thought about getting whipped cream. I thought about getting Cool Whip. And I said, no, I wanna keep this uh, authentic. And I'm so, so glad I did. I did not have high hopes for this. This is really phenomenal. I was completely prepared to make two bad recipes tonight and just have a laugh about it. This is killer. Go back in time via the kitchen. Put something together that takes you back to an era that you missed or an era that you miss. Get yourself one of these. They're out there. <laughs>